Hello and welcome to a new video. My name is Lucy Powery, also known as Lucy the Reader, and today I'm going to be sharing with you my favourite books of 2020 so far. I have a playlist full of my favourite videos. These are the videos that I film twice a year talking about my favourite books so far in the middle of the year and then my favourite books overall at the end of the year and I'm excited to bring you the latest instalment today. It has been a strange strange year for reading. I had one month where I didn't read anything, I had some months where I read loads because it was just the beginning of a pandemic and I wanted to hide myself in fiction. So it has been a strange reading year but I've got some really great favourites to share with you. And I'm going to cheat slightly by first talking to you about a book I haven't finished reading yet but I'm very close to finishing. The first book I want to talk to you about is Wolf Hall by Hilary Mantel. Wolf Hall is about the rise and rise of Thomas Cromwell who became Lord Chancellor of England, only one person down from King Henry VIII himself. The Tudor court was a dangerous place and this book talks about the Reformation when England became a Protestant country and one of the reasons for this is because King Henry VIII wanted to divorce his first wife Catherine of Aragon and marry Anne Boleyn. Hilary Mantel is such a genius in the way that she writes, in the way that she tells the story, in the research that she has done. I should say that this is a fiction book, it's not non-fiction so while some of the scenes aren't accurate she's trying to bring a historical novelist perspective on real events that happened. And so you are seeing the world through Thomas Cromwell's eyes. What you are seeing, he is seeing. And this really adds to the atmosphere of the book. It makes you want to root for Cromwell, even though most of the characters in this book are complex, as all human beings are. Some of them you like, some of them you dislike, some of them you like at the beginning, but begin to dislike as the book progresses. And you kind of reach those conclusions as Cromwell himself realises them. This is a worthy winner of the Man Booker Prize. I really hope that the third book wins the Man Booker as well because she really is so talented and I think I will be quickly reading the second and third books after this one. I love this, I cannot get enough. I would highly recommend this even if you don't love reading about history or history's events, it's just a fascinating insight into the human character and the human mind. One of the things I've been loving this year is reading books over a long period of time and I know the mark of a good book if after three months I can pick up a book and I can still be really into it and I kind of don't want to read it quickly because I'm enjoying it playing out like it's in real time. And just like Wolf Hall, my second book that I want to show you is one of those books. This is The Light Years by Elizabeth Jane Howard. Another pretty lengthy book that you can become lost in and Hilary Mantel has actually talked a lot about how much she loves this series and I can see the influences, I can see why she loves it so much and how it might have influenced her own writing. The Light Years is set just before the outbreak of the Second World War, when the world feels like it might be changing but hasn't quite changed yet. And it follows one main family, the Cazalets. There are three brothers and we follow each of those brothers as well as their wives and their children. It's mainly told from the perspective of the children. We follow the children around a lot but we also see the adults and I liked the difference between all of the characters. I certainly have some favourites, I have some that I don't like as much as others, but she creates this very vivid world and it's made me think a lot about what I value most in a good historical novel. When I'm reading about the past, what do I want to see? And the thing that Elizabeth Jane Howard does really well is that this really does feel like you have been transported into the pages of the book and you are living the lives of the characters. It's a good look at social history, so she'll mention certain brand names, she'll mention doing certain things that culturally we wouldn't do now or culturally we wouldn't think, but she's very good at viewing it through the lens of the past and so you feel as if you get it just as the characters would get it even if you aren't completely familiar with those things or those ways. I read this just as we began to go into lockdown and so there was something quite strange about reading about the outbreak of war or just as you were 
going into a war and those anxieties and how uncertain everything felt and I felt like it kind of mirrored how I was feeling and I think that kind of added to my experience of reading the book. Of course I wish I hadn't had to have those experiences but in some way it did make me love The Light Years all the more. Next up we have a book that I read at the start of the year. This is a graphic novel called Glass Town by my favourite graphic novelist Isabel Greenberg. There is a reason I love this so much, I think I would have loved it no matter what it was about, but Glass Town is a fictionalisation of the Brontes Juvenilia. So when the Brontes were young children they had their own fictional worlds, Glass Town and Angria, and then Emily and Anne peeled off and went their own way and created Gondor. And this mainly looks at Charlotte at certain points in her life when she's writing the Glass Town stories. And I would describe it as fantasy mixed with the reality, mixed with fantasy again, because you have Charlotte Bronte, who we know as a real figure, as she meets in real life her fictional hero. And then it also talks about the fantasy world that she has created. So you get different layers of the story, beautifully coloured and beautifully, beautifully illustrated. I think you could enjoy this whether you're familiar with the Bronte stories or not. I still think there's a lot here that's to be enjoyed and I think people will get a lot out of this. It's such a beautiful book. I think it's one that I'm going to be exploring lots when I just feel like I need it most. I felt emotional, I loved the story, I loved what she did with it to modernise the story, to make it more acceptable to a modern audience because there are many aspects such as colonialism in the Bronte's original stories that don't really speak or shouldn't speak to a modern audience today and Isabel Greenberg is very aware of this and I think adapted their stories very suitably. I don't think you can beat a good graphic novel. At the end of 2019 I read my first Edith Wharton book and 2020 has definitely been the year of Edith Wharton. My favourite of her books I've read this year has been Ethan Froome. Now please forgive me for my pronunciation of Ethan Froome. Some of you may pronounce it Ethan Froome and that's perfectly fine. I pronounce it the way I do because I live near a place called Froome so naturally that's why I pronounce it. I know some of you got angry with me last time when I pronounced it incorrectly for you, that's just the way I've chosen to do it so don't have a go at me please. This is a little different to Edith Wharton's other novels which are typically called the old New York novels. This is set in a location almost like Wuthering Heights. Think Wuthering Heights but set in America and it has that same kind of story structure as Wuthering Heights. So our protagonist goes to this town which seems kind of backwards, kind of unlike the customs for example of old New York and he meets a man called Ethan Froome or his stories about him then he meets him and Ethan Froome's story starts to unfold. We know that something tragic has happened but we're not quite sure what and as we go back into the past we see Ethan Froome as he struggles with ideas of love and what love should mean, about falling in love when you're not supposed to and you also get the sense that the character's destinies are predetermined and so you are leading up to a moment but you're not quite sure what it is. I would say that Ethan Froome is Edith Wharton's response to Emily Bronte's Wuthering Heights and because I'm such a Wuthering Heights fan I couldn't resist this but I think even if you didn't love Wuthering Heights you would still really love this. I think it can be quite controversial because a lot of students study it in the US so some people don't like it. I'm one of the people who really loved it and I would love to reread it at some point soon. I feel like it's one I could pick up at any time and get something out of it new each time. And then my final favourite of 2020 so far is a middle grade book which is a recent release. I knew that I was going to love this book as soon as I started reading it, as soon as I heard about it. And I should mention that we have the same agent but I would have read it anyway and I still would have loved it. This is A Kind of Spark by Elle McNichol which is about a young Scottish girl who is autistic and it's about her quest to build a statue in her village dedicated to witches who burned during the Scottish witch trials. I laughed, I cried, I fell in love with Addie. I wish that I had had this book when I was 
a nine or ten year old because this would have I'm sure been one of my favourite books. It's published by Knights Of who are an independent publisher who aim to publish diverse books that other publishers just aren't publishing. They are very determined, I really love their publishing and Elle McNichol is such a talent. This is an incredibly perceptive book, it's a book that is much needed and if you have a young person in your life you have to make them read this. But also I think adults can learn a lot from this book about what it means to be an autistic person, how autistic people are perceived and what their realities really are. Often when people talk about autism it's from the perspective of knowing somebody who is autistic rather than actually autistic perspectives and that's why I think it's so important to publish autistic voices in fiction and non-fiction and this is such a shining talent of a book. I loved everything about it, I'm going to be reading this non-stop I think, I can't get enough and I really want a new Elle McNichol book right about now because I just wish this wasn't her debut. I wish she had like a whole backlist that I could read immediately but I know we have so much to look forward to in the future. She really is a talent to watch. So I really hope you enjoyed hearing about my favourite books of 2020 so far. In the comments I would love to know what your favourite books of the year so far have been, what you thought of them, whether you've read any of the ones on my list and I will see you soon. Happy reading!